Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to yet another Bagels and Birdies. We obviously have a very special guest on the program. We're not going to reveal who that is just yet, but this guest did take the time and put together a very nice PowerPoint presentation to share with everyone. Because look, it's the last week of the season. We have five, six, and seven teams. There's all those teams fighting for three spots. Um, just, just craziness in the last week of the MFL season. So we have to just break it down. We have to kind of go through it all. And I'm going to try to figure out how to share my screen on Zoom. And I'm going to hit share. And now I hope you can all see this beautiful PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So we have final week preparation of Bagels and Birdies production. This, I think we all know where this is going, uh, if it wants to work. Hold, please. <laughs> it's that time. It's that simple. And here's where we're at. Here's the situation for each team and we're going to get into it. We're going to kind of go down the list. We're going to start with the stoners. We're going to get into that first, first matchup, but please guess, reveal yourself, say hello. We have a lot to get into here. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you today? There's only one person. There's only one person who had the time to, to put all this together, crunch all the numbers. And of course it's Josh. The man who has no job is here. He's here to help <laughs> you out. He's here to make you all laugh and smile. How are you doing, Joe? Thank you for having me on your wonderful show. I'm yeah. blessed and thankful for being here. We're doing great. So hold on real quick. If, I, if I'm if i sharing this, they don't see us or do they see us? Oh, they I, they should see us. Because if not, I'm going to end the slideshow so then they can see our beautiful faces. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show them our faces at the end of anything, but I believe they can see us right now. Okay. Well, I hope they can see us. Um, either way, stoners, you can see there winning in. If they lose, are they out? Not necessarily. They can still get in with the Coyotes and a real deal loss. The stoners likely advance on points if that happens. Um, but obviously the easiest path, they win and they're in. Um, and they're playing Murphy's Law. So for that matchup, Murphy's Law is in. They're already in. They've put the top four match, uh, top four seed. Um, so, you know, don't have to touch too much on the Murphy's Law. But the Stoners, one of the five teams with the, that six and seven record, they probably have one of the strongest starting lineups. Definitely added those six and seven teams. Um, you know, they finally got their, their actual roster put together last week for the first time and got the win. What are you, what are you seeing in that matchup? What are you liking there? Uh, I, I I hate to agree, but <clears throat> Stoners are a scary team. Yeah, you know, you know this 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 Richie the Sugar, you know Magic Man, uh, Valerio. He uh, he's got a team that can really do some damage. Tua, I do think Tua has a hell of a game if he gets healthy. I think yeah. he has a nice bounce back against a terrible Chargers defense. Um, James doing James like like things, playing Kyler against New England. <laughs> uh, but but I will say. Tony Pollard versus Houston. That <clears throat> might be the scariest thing in that yeah. matchup. Because you got uh, Tony Pollard, who's been on fire. And he could put up 20, 30, 40 points. You just don't know. I stopped sharing my screen, by the way. I don't know if they could no, have seen this. I saw. I saw. Um, I, I hope they got the picture of, of that beautiful chart. We'll go back to the PowerPoint. But... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the Stoners are a really good team. Um, this is also a potential. This could be a back-to-back -back matchup for these two teams um, if the seeding breaks out that way. <clears throat> but I like the Stoners here. I think for the Stoners, it's simple. They win and they're in. And honestly, I think they I think they get that win. Their their starting lineup is just a really good starting lineup, and they're going to be a really tough team for you know a higher. They're going to be a tough team for that higher seed to to play against. Yeah, the biggest things here for the Stoners are going to be will Mixon play and how will Mark Andrews play against Pittsburgh? Those are two uh, two big question marks. You know, does Amari Cooper actually come alive? Is this Watson? You know, does that whole Watson connection actually play out anytime soon? Yeah. So 
He definitely has some question marks. ESPN has this as a very high score game. If you're a projections guy, they have Richie winning by almost 17 points. So ESPN likes Richie. I like Richie. It sounds like you like Richie. I like Richie, unfortunately. So it seems like the Stoners are going in. Congrats, Richie. No need to uh, pay attention on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, go get stoned. Yeah. All right, the next team on our list, any given Sunday. Again, another team winning in. Uh, and again, if they lose, they're not necessarily out. Uh, let's see. They would need, again, Coyotes to lose. They need real uh, – sorry, the Stoners to lose. Um, and if the if you lose, they likely get enough points. A, a, a few different ways that they can get in, even if they do lose. But again, a simple winning in scenario. And lucky for John, he does have an expansion team, although the better of the two expansion teams. Um, no, the, well, 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 I should cut yourself short, John. <laughs> I mean, you have a guy, an expansion team, who you know played a, a guy who was out. Two I didn't say better there. manager. I didn't. I definitely yeah, didn't okay, say fine, that. Fine, fine, fine. Just want to make sure you're you're keeping your head up high, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the story for John right now is quarterback. Quarterback is injured. One has a bye. Looking at Mike White in the starting lineup at the at the moment uh, in Buffalo, which is it's a decision. It's certainly a decision that's being made. Um, I don't know. I, this is an ugly game, but sometimes you got to win ugly. What do you What do you think? You look disgusted. I am. I am. I mean, <laughs> listen, this is very simple. The Jets get destroyed. Sorry, Jets fans. Um, yeah, you won against Buffalo at home. Congratulations. If you're better, you take Buffalo minus 14 on this game. And you is just, that what it is, 14? Oh, no, it's nine and a half. Oh. Well, guess what? Buffalo is going to win by 14 to 21. I'm sorry. I'm just saying it now. You heard it here first. Mike White might throw three picks. And, and this is going to be the game where everyone's going to be like, bring back Sam Darnold. Okay, that, awesome. that's – that's we're gonna, we're gonna like trade back for Sam Darnold because that's what's gonna happen in this game. Sam Darnold's gonna win for Seattle, and all the Jets fans are gonna be like, "Oh my God, we lost greatness." Um, I just don't see a good ending here. I think I actually do believe Joe in this matchup. You have the comebacks with Derek Carr and Josh Jacobs Thursday night. That's the make or break in this entire matchup. Huge. That's, I think the match is decided by Thursday night. Yeah. He's if those two. Yeah. If, if who, those who two don't put up 40. If those two like? don't put up 45. Do you think they can win the comebacks? I do. I, I... They're projected to win. They, no. <laughs> they're projected to win. I don't like agreeing with ESPN. I, I really – I never do. I think they're always wrong. Yeah. But I'm personally, I'm taking AGS. I think, I think this is, listen, sometimes you gotta, you gotta win that disgusting defensive battle. And I think that's what we're going to see here. I think we see two teams, maybe even below 80 points, but I, I think AGS finds a way. The, the, just the talent across the board is high. I don't know. I don't trust it, but I'm going to take AGS here. It's, I know it's, it's like this. This is this is one of those games that's on tilt, and AGS might still weasel his way into the playoffs. I use the word weasel specifically for you, John Gilligan, but I think I think he loses this one, and and tries to slither in the back door. I'll tell you what: if if anyone's got a loco on hand Monday night, you can have Ramondre Stevenson of AGS versus Marquise Brown in the comebacks. I'm seeing I'm seeing signs for an early loco on that one. Yeah, my 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 uh my notes here. I said I I believe that AGS will be down somewhere between twelve to fifteen points going into Monday Night Football. Mm-hmm. Probably loses in that case. Yeah. Um. All right. The the third team we can chat about that was on the chart there. We can talk real quickly. The Coyotes. I think they lose this week anyway. They need to win and, and get a lot of help. Um. Playing the violin over here, yeah. a little man, and yeah, no, no, yeah, uh, not really, not really worth the time. No, I'm sorry. there is a way though. I just wanted to throw. I just wanted to mention the name. There, he can get in. They need a win, and they need two of the other three teams to lose. It's possible, unlikely, but possible. Yeah, basically, uh, basically, he needs John and Richie to lose because unless Joe Kiss and myself draw. 
I don't think it's ever happened in the league's history anymore. No, it used to. It did happen before we made the points change. Um, unless he wants a draw in his hands, it's just yeah. not going to happen. He, I mean, he really needs some luck to come his way. Yeah. And then we can talk about the matchup that everyone is fo- so focused on this week. We have real deal for Circle the Wagons. The winning team is in the playoffs. Uh, losing, if you lose, you're probably out, but you still could get in. Joe Kiss could get in. He's the highest uh, point score of those six and seven teams. So he has that going for him. Um, but again, the, the simple way to move on here is to win. And I'm going to just start this by saying we're going to have three horrendous running backs in this game. So for all the shit that everyone's throwing at Joe Kiss, and he rightfully so, just a horrible managerial job by trading for a guy who also has a week 14. <laughs> just a, an idiotic move. However, I would still take I, – I still think Joe Kiss's running backs are scoring more than yours this week. Uh, 100%. I did get an official quote from Joe Kiss, and he said that he would play Ray Rice if it got him four points this week. So that's what he's thinking about in his RB2 situation. Um, I think this is going to be a great matchup. Where's your head at in, in this? Because, you know, I, what I see is I, I see a circle of wagons team that has great players and they all outside of Derrick Henry, they all have horrendous matchups. Josh Allen against the Jets. The Jets have a very good defense, not a good matchup for Josh Allen. Mike Evans at San Fran, bad matchup. Hopkins in New England after or against New England after Belichick's hyping up how good Hopkins is, not a good sign. Um, I don't just, I see a lot of problems for circle of wagons. So, you know, I know you, you harped a little, you talked a little bit about Josh Allen there. And, and you definitely talked about the running backs. My running backs are freaking terrible. Yeah. Right. All right. The whole Michael Carter situation, I probably wouldn't play him this week against the Bills anyway. Um, Elijah Mitchell going down, that one hurt me. That 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 one really, I think, hurt me. Even though they're playing Tampa. You know, this this week really was I was hoping to be in the playoffs by now and winning last week. But uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. And I, I see my team has three guys in prime time Sunday night football. That's Eight points. That's that's you know, me going to the gas station on the block, grabbing two locos and hoping and praying that the gods come my way. Cause yeah, I, I you know, that's really what I need. I need Mike Williams to find a new fucking ankle. Um, yeah. And I do believe Derrick Henry is going to just destroy my running backs. Uh, Josh Allen, I think, has a day. You know, I know Joe Kiss has a quarterback quarterback quandary on his hands. As <laughs> some would say, you know, he's got Josh Allen and Jared Goff. What does he do? Like, what would you do? If I, if I own Josh Allen, I don't even have a backup quarterback, so I'm the wrong person to ask. Um, I can tell you this. I know for a fact Joe Kiss is – he's already thinking about it. He's thinking about the impossible. Um, I, would, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I lost with Josh Allen on the bench. I, I don't really care if he's playing like the 2000 Ravens. I'm playing Josh Allen. Um, but, hey, that's coming from the guy in last place, so what do I – it, that, that's that's your franchise guy. He, I mean, he's he's keeping Josh Allen. He's kept him. That's a guy you're gonna play every game, every time he's in and healthy. Yeah. And you're gonna tell me now you're not gonna start him. I'll, that's, I'll, I'll tell you the guy I would say. It's, his name is Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans puts up a goose egg this week. Not a goose. Not an actual zero, but you know. Uh, <clears throat> I I agree with you. Um, I, I CD Lamb, <clears throat> I think, has a little bit of a shocker, and he has a, a slower game. Um, I, you I wish you didn't trade him CD Lamb right now. Yeah, there's things that hurt me right now. You know, like you know that first round pick that I don't have anymore anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, really coming up short on that one. That, that hurts. Just, if you just never traded Kelsey <clears throat> CD Lamb, you'd be in a much better spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I did try and tra- I would have won last week actually if I had CD Lamb. Talk suckers. Um, I if you know I did try and pick up the Raiders defense. Uh, that failed. Yeah. I did try and pick up Josh Kelly. I realized why I couldn't pick him up. 
it's because I would have had too many running backs on my roster. Mm-hmm. So bad managerial skills right here on me. So um so you got here and you win it. I I can't see myself not winning. Let's yeah, just say I, that. I wanted to I wanted to take Joe Kiss just because obviously you're gonna pick yourself, but I I can't. I look at this, I look at his team, I look at the matchups, and I I think he doesn't have a single week under 80 points. I think it happens. I think he happens this week, and I, I think you you move on. Um so I mean, those, just, so, just so he knows if I move on the next three weeks of his life, well, maybe I'll I'll wait until after Christmas. <laughs> but he probably won't come out. And by the way, by the way, sweetheart Joe Kiss, I'll be in New York on Monday night, baby. Oh boy. Oh yeah. I, I, might come knocking. I might come knocking at your door. <laughs> All right. So we touched on the big matchup. So for me, my final standings are pretty <clears> simple. <throat> I've got obviously Kevin at one, I have Dan at two. I have the Rogues moving up to the three spot. I have Murphy's Law in the four spot. And then, like I said, I have AGS winning and taking the five spot. I have the Stoners winning and taking the six. And I have you winning and taking the seven. That's that's what I see. I see Joe Kiss on the outside looking in, which is kind of crazy to think because I really think he might have the best team in the league. He just – honestly, he has no one to blame but himself for making the, – the one movie makes is is now on a bye when Jonathan Taylor is also on a bye. Just – you really hate to see something like that happen to, to a guy like Joe Kiss. It, it, you wonder it, why he's losing in the championship. It's It's – you know – Things do add up at some point in time. I do have I do have one difference. It's a big difference. Yeah. I have I have Utrebellion at one. I got Deuces Wild at two. The Rogues at three. Murphy's Law at four. At five, I have the Stoners. Okay. Six, I have myself. And seven, I have Circle the Wagons. Ooh. Because you I do have John losing. I think John loses. I think Joe Kiss loses. And I think Joe Kiss just topples him in the points category, and John and John, in all the with all those beautiful picks that he has, can pick himself a new roster next year and keep on <laughs> trying to get picks. Yeah, picks don't win championships, baby. Yeah, I will say it's for Joe Kiss. He's lost three games in a row, which is tough. It's tough that he's in this situation. The only good thing is that he he does score a lot, and he's second in the league in points. He's got a pretty big scoring edge over all of the other six and seven teams, which can definitely help them if, the, if someone does slip up. Um, so it's, it's going to be a crazy, it's going to be a crazy week. It's, it's going to be exciting to, to watch along. Um, it's going to suck. It's going to be it's it's stressful. My, it might, it's it's definitely going to be stressful. I like how a lot of, a lot of these matchups are going to come down to Sunday night and, and Monday night, you know, potentially. So I think, I think we have a, a hell of a week in store and um you know, as someone who's probably going to come in last, you know, I'm excited to see what happens. And, hey, who knows? Just throwing it out there. I could beat Dan this week. Davis could lose. Davis could be in last place. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Um, Anything's possible, Joe. Anything's yeah. possible. You never know. Maybe Dan rests a few starters, as, as Kevin was suggesting. But, whoa. Does that mean it's time? To- oh, that means you shouldn't rest your starters, guys. Look at that. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's a pretty good rundown. Um, I don't think we had anything else in here. Uh, I had we had some point totals. Circle the wagons has the most points, followed by AGS. Blah blah blah. We've got some playoff percentages. Uh, you got anything else you want to share? I think we kind of touched on the matchups. We touched on standings. Um, I got it nothing. Might be, it might be a tough night for Circle the Wagons. Is what I'm seeing. I got nothing, Joe. I mean, maybe I'll surprise with a few different changes to the lineup, but. I'm sure you will. That's basically it. I'll probably fuck myself over in the end. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Josh, for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for crunching all the numbers for us. I, I don't know if I would have been able to figure all this, this shit out myself. Thank you, Joe, for having me. This is this is an honor. Yeah. Second time, an honor. Well, toaster bagels, roaster drives. We'll see you next time. <laughs>